Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen, Starship launch may be imminent. B-21 Raider makes first flight. And Helijet inks deal for four Beta eVTOLs. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen Program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Starship launch may be imminent, waiting only on fish and wildlife. The much-anticipated second test flight of the SpaceX Starship may finally be imminent, but the main reason for the delay has little to do with R&D, but bureaucracy, especially from the folks at the Fish and Wildlife Department, which hold the keys to the last remaining roadblock. The April 2023 inaugural orbital test flight of SpaceX's Starship platform, the largest, most powerful rocket yet conceived of by humankind, proved something less than a resounding success. But since then, the FAA and other governmental permitting processes have dragged on slower than a Piper Cub taxiing in a heavy wind. Notwithstanding the mishap having claimed no lives and damaged only property belonging to SpaceX, the FAA, characteristically reactionary, summarily grounded Starship before stipulating the implementation of 63 corrective actions, a bold gambit for an agency only semi-competent in the certification and oversight of conventional atmospheric aircraft. Some time ago, SpaceX boss Elon Musk noted that, quote, unlike its aircraft division, which is fine, the FAA space division has a fundamentally broken regulatory structure. Their rules are meant for a handful of expendable launches per year from a few government facilities. Under those rules, humanity will never get to Mars, end quote. Thankfully, though, reports indicate that the last of the permits could be in hand within a week, and thereafter excitement, one way or another, is likely to ensue. Coming up after the break, another interesting flying car design arises. your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at King Schools. Com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our Next Gen Minute. Another interesting flying car design arises. Subaru showed off a new concept for a flying car. The design seems a bit ungainly. The design requirements for an electric or sustainable vertical takeoff aircraft only leave so much styling to be done, of course, but the homely assortment of rotors, ports, and blade guards are hard to assemble in a way that carries the grace of a well-sorted automobile or fixed-wing aircraft. The Subaru model sports six large rotors arranged in a roughly hexagonal arrangement, each ducted and fared for maximum protection from accidental contact, in the horizontal plane at least. Ingenuity makes the twofer. NASA's Ingenuity Mars helicopter made a pair of flights in preparation for a coming span where it will remain out of comms with home base. Flight number 65 on November 2nd saw the little helo take a 48-second jaunt for 23 feet, followed the next day by a 23-second flight of two feet. The flights, according to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, prepared the Mars helicopter for the upcoming Mars Solar Conjunction, when mission teams will put a moratorium on all remote commands for a two-week period. 
AeroVironment continues work on its shipborne Jump 20 UAV. The march of history continues with trials for AeroVironment's uncrewed Jump 20 system aboard the USS Burlington, testing out its ability to launch and recover from a moving ship. The test flights were able to showcase the Jump 20's capabilities throughout the U.S. Navy's Southern Command 4th Fleet hybrid campaign event, providing some nifty media exposure and proof of concept for the company. The Burlington proved an adequate platform for the UAV, proving that the AeroVironment aircraft could autonomously launch and recover aboard vessels moving at a 20-knot clip. Montgomery Council Approves Police Drone the nascent boom in small-town law enforcement operations adopting drones as first responders continues, with Montgomery County, Maryland as the newest addition to the club. After a unanimous approval vote, the MCPD will kickstart its Drone as First Responders pilot program, which will acquire a pair of drones to pre-screen and scout out calls before human officers arrive on the scene. The drones offer a quick, cheap way to check for threats, to gauge the level of response needed, or even reassure callers that help is indeed on the way. That was our Next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. B-21 Raider makes first flight. Nearly a year after its original unveiling last December, the B-21 Raider was spied making its first flight test, exciting aviation enthusiasts with a long-running B-2 Spirit successor. Despite the futuristic and utilitarian design of flying wings, they remain a niche aircraft type, only really in service with the U.S. Air Force in the B-2. As such, the excitement was unsurprising when Northrop Grumman showed off the slippery flat form of the Raider to throngs of onlookers. Photographers caught the daytime flight of the first B-21 on November 10th, capturing the sights and sounds of the next-gen bomber. Currently, only half a dozen aircraft are in the production pipeline, with plans to one day acquire 100 or more once approved. In a public statement, Air Force spokesperson Ann Stefanik confirmed the Raiders' flight testing, saying that, quote, flight testing is a critical step in the test campaign managed by the Air Force Test Center and 412th Test Wings B-21 Combined Test Force to provide survivable, long-range, penetrating strike capabilities to deter aggression and strategic attacks against the U.S., allies, and partners, end quote. Stefanik also acknowledged the current timetable for delivered aircraft, with B-21s on track to be delivered to Ellsworth AFB in the mid-2020s. And after these messages, Helijet inks deal for four Beta eVTOLs. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyleader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. I grew up in an aviation family. My dad flew airplanes and flew air shows, actually. So ever since I was three years old, the only thing I've ever wanted to do was be an air show pilot. It's cliche, but I get to live my dream every single day. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, the new aerobatic propeller. It's increased the performance of the airplane. It's made the harmonics balance throughout the airplane so much better. By far the best aerobatic propeller that I've ever flown behind. Welcome back. Helijet Inc.'s deal for four Beta eVTOLs. Helijet International placed a firm order for four beta technologies ALEA 250 eVTOL aircraft with the intention of running them along its fleet of almost 20 aircraft already in service. The deal is a bit of a first for Canada, marking off the initial firm sale of a next-gen sustainable AAM platform to a domestic operator. Helijet was so excited about the purchase, CEO Danny Sittenham held a press conference at the tail end of October to announce the deal alongside reps from Beta Technologies and the Canadian Advanced Air Mobility Group. The firm's collection of coastal heliports has grown from a small half-hour route between Vancouver and downtown Victoria, all the way to an operation boarding more than 2.5 million passengers per year. The Alia 250s will allow Helijet to haul five passengers at a time once it achieves certification in 2026, allowing rotary wing performance at a price point far easier on the piggy bank thanks to its all-electric running gear. The purchase makes Helijet a first for Beta Technologies too, a deal they believe came about because of their intention to actually certify the ALEA for IFR. 
And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.